compare this with the case of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Whenever his life was in danger, his followers were competing each other to protect him. At the war of Uhud, when the Qurayshi started showering arrows from the top of the mountain, his followers stood in front of the Prophet as a human shield. Many died. When the life of the Prophet was in danger, and Tulha radiallahu and who saw this, he came running and stood before the Prophet like a human shield. Sharp swords made deep wounds and spears penetrated his body. Still he did not move. Whenever he was receiving these wounds, there were glitter in his eyes and brightness on his face. After the war, the Prophet told Abu Bakr anhu, to look at his brother Tulha. When Abu Bakr looked, Tulha anhu, was lying there with more than 70 wounds. After the war, friends asked Tulha why he did not move, whether he did not feel pain. Tulha anhu, said, there was severe pain and I wanted to move. But the thought entered my mind that if I moved a little, the spears would touch my dear prophet. Then my body did not move. My mind did not flutter and I did not feel pain. That was the faith the followers had for the dear prophet. Once a woman was waiting for the news of the war. Her husband and three children had gone to participate. A person came and told her her husband died in the war. She asked him, what happened to my beloved prophet? After some time, the person came again and told her, your one son died in the war. She again asked, what happened to my dear prophet? After some time, the person again came and told her, your another son also died in the war. She asked, what happened to my dear prophet? After some time, the person came and told her, your last son also died in the war. She asked, what happened to my dear prophet? That person was surprised. He asked her, are you not worried about your husband and children? She said, I'm really worried about my husband and children, but I'm more worried about my dear prophet. My prophet, everything comes only after my dear prophet. That was the faith and dedication the followers had for the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because he possessed great human qualities, because he lived according to the principles of Quran. Once a person asked the wife of the Prophet Aisha Radiallahu Anha, what's the character of Muhammad? She said, Khulkuhu al Quran. Quran is his character. Still certain critics say, Muhammad was an imposter, a false prophet. We know about a lot of people who say that they are gods, that they have divine powers, that they have got powers to bring good and evil to people, who commands their followers to worship them, who commands them to pray to him. Prophet Muhammad wasallam never said anything like that. He never told anybody that he is God. He never told anybody that he had divine powers. He never told anybody that he can bring good and evil to people. He never told anybody to paint his picture and bow before it. He never told anybody to erect his idol and garland it. He never told anybody that after his death, the place of grave should be made a place of worship. He never commanded his followers to worship him. He never commanded his followers to pray to him. On the contrary, he told them to pray for him, for his family. He told them that he is first the servant of God and then the prophet of God. He would never have said that. Still certain critics say Muhammad was a false prophet. During nights, he used to stand for long hours and pray to Almighty God. At his deathbed, with tear-filled eyes and shivering lips, he prayed to God, O oh Allah, my followers should not make the same mistake, the mistake committed by the so-called followers of Jesus Christ. My followers should never consider me as God, as the so-called followers of Jesus Christ consider him as God. 
If he was a false prophet, he would never have said that. Still certain critics say Muhammad was a false prophet, an imposter. Muhammad sallallahu wanted a son and God blessed him with a son. His name was Ibrahim. Prophet was so happy, he carried that little baby in his hands. But when the boy reached one and a half years, he died. Prophet was so sad, he carried the dead body of that little boy in his hands. And he said, O oh Ibrahim, I am so sad about your death. My eyes are filled with tears. My heart is bleeding. Even then, I will not utter a word against my law. At that time, news reached him that there was an eclipse and people were telling that Muhammad is God. That is why this eclipse happened. Muhammad had divine powers. That is why eclipse occurred on the day when his son was dead. Here was a golden opportunity for the prophet to exploit. He could have told them that he is God. He could have told them that he had got divine powers. He could have told them, yes, eclipse occurred because my son died. He never said that. Even when his heart was filled with grief, he went to the people and enlightened them. He told them, this eclipse has nothing to do with the death of my son. I am just an ordinary man, a servant and the prophet of God. This is a phenomena from God. If he was a false prophet, he would not have said that. Still certain critics say, Muhammad was an imposter, a false prophet. Once the prophet was talking to certain rich people in Mecca, a blind old man came and asked him about Islam. As the prophet was engrossed in the conversation, he did not look at the blind man. Almighty God criticized the prophet and a verse was revealed. Prophet did not suppress that. He immediately published it before the people. If he was a false prophet, he would never have done that. Still certain critics say, Muhammad was an imposter, a false prophet. And what was the material gain that prophet made out of this prophethood? When God selected Muhammad to be his prophet, Muhammad was a rich man, a happily married man, and a successful trader. But after getting the revelations, and after becoming a prophet, he had to suffer persecution, receive injuries. He had to flee his land and live like a refuge in a strange land. And during the last days, when he was the uncrowned emperor of Arabia, undisputed spiritual leader of his people, and the commander-in-chief of one of the most powerful military force of that time, he led a very ordinary life. He mended his own shoes, patches, dress, swept the floor, kindled the fire, milked the goat. His food was dates and water. He slept on palm leaves. The house from where light was spread throughout the world was in darkness because there was no oil in the lamp. One day, his daughter Fatima radiallahu and her approached the Prophet and said, Dad, look at my hands. There are full of bruises doing household works. Look at my shoulder. There are marks carrying buckets full of water. Look at my clothes. It's full of dirt. So, Dad, please give me a servant. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam refused that request and said, You do your work yourself. On the day he died, the only earnings were a few coins. A part of that went to satisfy a debt and remaining was given to a person who came to the Prophet for help. The cloth in which he breathed his last had many patches and was torn. And at the age of 63, when Prophet left this world, the world was at his feet, but not a dinar to his credit. That was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Still certain critics say, Muhammad was an imposter, a false prophet.